Howdy. Welcome to the next segment of Tripwire Threat Intelligence University. It's my pleasure uh, to um, segment. Uh, my name is Bryce Schroeder. Um, I am the Vice President of Systems Engineering for Tripwire. And I have probably the, the best job in the company. And, it, and the why of that is really pretty simple. Um, the team that, that I have the privilege to lead has the ability to see what problems customers are having and respond with solutions that meet those needs uh, in a way that solves uh, issues and creates um, opportunity for them to reduce the amount of time that they spend to have a better confidence in what they do and to automate um, the capability that they have in the business context that they're using. Um, so that's why I'm excited here. I, I have the, the privilege today uh, through um, Threat Intelligence University to present to you two new solutions that we're bringing forward um, that are really impressively cool. Um, and so I, wanna, I want to uh, talk about how those work, what they look like, um, and, and uh, really discuss through them so that you have a deep understanding of, of what they look like. So the, um, walk through that, I want to talk about kind of the overall uh, problem that we're trying to solve. So that's something that we call the enterprise th cyber threat gap. Um, and there's really three distinct pieces to that. And we do that in a time clock fashion, really because it is really about time. Um, although they may not actually be um, all the same size in terms of, of how things work. So the first piece is, is really the detection gap. So if something is happening, um, how long does it take me to know it? Um, between if it is a breach or if it isn't, um, how long does it take me to know um, that that actual uh, breach event or incursion has taken place? And then more importantly, do I have really good data that tells me that I actually have been breached as opposed to something else taking place? So that's that time segment. Second one is a little different, and that is if I have uh, something that's occurred, I have some kind of security incident that I need to respond to, how much time does it take between the event actually taking place and my discovering of it um, to actually being able to take action and to do some sort of remediation. And more importantly, can I limit uh, the damage if I've actually caught it when it's in uh, flight, when it's actually happening uh, at the same time? And then the second piece is, again, um, if I have really good, accurate information and telemetry about what's going on, I want to be able to know how bad is this? Um, is this a uh, company level event, or is it just a minor moment um, that I need to be able to put behind me and learn from. So that's really kind of the, how we define the response gap piece. And then the third portion is prevention gap. So if I am following that flow between detection, response, and now prevention, I have lessons learned. I've actually been able to go through and remediate what's happening. And now I want to be able to take those lessons learned and determine how I put preventative measures in place. How do I change my stance? such that that thing that I've gone through um, doesn't happen again. More importantly, um, the prevention gap space is really um, proactive. Um, I may have had an event happen, but more importantly, how do I make sure that exposures and vulnerabilities in my system or in my infrastructure um, are, are removed? How do I remove those things proactively? Um, so not only do, can I avoid have this happening again, but more importantly, how do I prevent it from ever happening to begin with? Um, that's really the question and the, 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 the win that we're looking to gain from this piece. So that's kind of how we phrase uh, and look at things, and we'll kind of come back to each of these things as we walk through um, each of this, the, the two solutions that I'm going to be presenting to you today. The two um, solution suites that I'm going to be introducing. The first one I call hide and seek. Um, and then the, the second um, that I've got is called Seek and Destroy. So hide and seek is pretty simple, and that is how do I find what I don't know I have in my system? Because if I don't know that it's there, I either can't protect it 
or potentially protect against it. And then the seek and destroy pieces, if I know I've got bad things, I've got, um, I've got things that are in my system, um, in my environment, how do I remove those um, and how do I defend against them in a swift, efficient, and time-effective manner? So those are the two pieces that we're going to look at. We're going to look at hide and seek and seek and destroy. So first, so hide and seek is uh, fixed with something that we've, we've developed. We call it the tripwire asset discovery appliance. And it's really about being able to see um, those things that we don't know and don't currently have under control or management. And, and the real premise is what I don't protect, I can't protect, and I don't know about, I can't either defend with or against. And that really comes from the SANS uh, Critical Security Controls 20. Uh, and if you think about the top 20, specifically about the top uh, four, they, they go, number one, you know, what do I have? Um, do I know what's there or not there from a really a, from a hardware standpoint? Number two, um, is it what's the software that's running? How does it connect? What is its profile? Um, how does it work? Um, is it something that I know of or don't know of? Number three, have I hardened well? Have a, do I know that from a security configuration management standpoint that I've done a good job um, of of closing down loopholes, am I monitoring things, am I able to actually um, secure my environment in such a way that I can prevent uh, events from happening. And then the other piece is, is number four, which is a vulnerability management program. Do I know that I'm doing proactive things to remove exposures uh, and uh, potential exploits and vulnerabilities inside of my environment? Those are really the top four. So, but the second two don't really make any sense unless you know what you have, and more importantly, that you know what's on each of those devices. So that's what we're really trying to address. And to do that, we've introduced this new capability, this new product. It's called the Tripwire Enterprise Discovery Appliance. And it's pretty cool looking. Uh, it's big, it's bold, it's orange. Um, because Tripwire is uh, really uh, an orange company in terms of how that works. Um, do a lot of critical benefits in terms of how it functions and works. So let's talk quickly about uh, what those benefits are. So the first one is, um, how do you know that you're covering all of your critical assets? So the real purpose of why we're bringing this forward is so you can gain confidence that you know what you have uh, inside of your infrastructure. Um, and that things that are transient, things that may be coming on and off uh, your network or in and out of your environment um, are actually covered and that you have good information about whether those are permitted and authorized or whether they're not. Second issue is to reduce risk. So what does that mean, reducing risk? Well, if you have rogue devices, or more importantly, if they're not rogue devices, maybe they just may be open ports or it may be software that creates uh, additional exposure in your environment, as, as uh, a lot of software does, whether it's an IRC chat type system, or whether it's a, uh, a file sharing mechanism that you don't necessarily permit from a software standpoint. We want to give you the ability to know that those are there, that they've been added, perhaps to permitted systems, or maybe to rogue devices that have been added to your network. I want to give you that level of confidence in terms of what's happening. And then the real piece is, how do we do that confidence portion, reducing risk, and do it by saving you time? And we do that by uh, providing a, an automated tag mechanism that immediately identifies those assets and provides automated tagging um, so that the systems that you already have in place um, can monitor those automatically and know whether they're permitted or not and whether they're uh, rogue devices that are authorized or whether they're permitted uh, devices that may have incremental software put on them. That's really the key benefit to you. Gain confidence, reduce risk, increase automation, and save time. So let's talk about what this really looks like uh, in, an, in another level. So in the first place, um, the solution is really simple. Um, it integrates directly with our Tripwire Enterprise flagship uh, software. 
Um, and what it does is it's an appliance form factor in either virtual or physical format that allows you to discover on an ongoing, continuous basis all of the connected assets and devices and applications uh, and service levels that are in that um, space. And it provides it directly into Tripwire Enterprise so that you can see uh, an asset inventory of uh, whether the asset's permitted and whether or not the software that's on it is something that you have an understanding of or whether it's been put on there um, because it's a potential uh, indicator of compromise. Um, but it allows for very effective security configuration management and more importantly, keeps you up with deep compliance as well as a deep security stance and the ability to react. And it does that in a very simple, easy format in terms of being able to allow you to look at assets and then simply understand um, whether they are permitted and understood or whether they're not in terms of um, authorization and monitoring um, from a Tripwire Enterprise point of view. And then with that, um, it's extremely simple um, to deploy this. As I mentioned before, it comes in two form factors. It's either a hardware appliance, which you can insert into your environment, connect directly into your Tripwire Enterprise infrastructure, or you can apply a virtual appliance piece. The two are exactly the same infrastructure, the only difference being um, the hardware comes with hardware and the virtual version goes in, in OVA format uh, into your virtual uh, infrastructure piece. Uh, it provides exceedingly high accuracy of data. It's very high performance. It integrates with direct smart node tagging capability and scales uh, into, into large network um, functionality across all of your infrastructure. And again, answers those key questions that you want. What's on your systems? What are you currently monitoring? More importantly, what should you be monitoring but are not? Uh, and when are there rogue devices that could be potential uh, compromises inside of your environment? So really, what we're doing here is we're introducing, um, with the Tripwire Asset Discovery Appliance, the answer to the hide-and-seek problem. If there's something that's out there that's trying to hide, you now have the ability to seek it, determine whether or not it's something that's permitted or not permitted, and whether the software that's on it is actually something that you have desire to have on it, or whether or not it actually provide or opens up a door for additional um, vulnerability or exploit in your environment. Critical information to be able to harden and control and monitor uh, the environment that you have. That's the Tripwire Asset Discovery Appliance. Really cool stuff. So uh, with that, I want to walk into really the next uh, segment and introduce um, our next solution uh, that's on place. I call it Seek and Destroy. It's really the ability to protect against bad hashes. So if you're familiar with, um, with hash uh, capability at all, it's really how do I identify uh, signatures? How do I see whether or not something is good or bad? And I do that by looking at indicators of compromise by doing a hash match. So seek and destroy, protection against bad hashes. Here we go. So what does that look like? What does happen when you receive a, an indicator of compromise? And what does it mean to you? Do you have a uh, Palo Alto system or a uh, checkpoint or threat cloud from Cisco, threat grid from Cisco implementation? And then how are you using it? Um, if you're like a lot of people, when you get it, you really don't know what to do. Um, and, and much to the, the point here, um, Oftentimes, it's just as easy to stick your head in the sand. But we all know that that's not something you can do. Um, that's a, a, a bad opportunity um, to go there from here. So we want to be able to, to do something with it. So I've got this thing. Um, it's a hash. It's, it's kind of interesting in terms of what it looks like. But the real question is, now that I've got this thing that I need to look for, how do I check for it? How do I actually use... Um, this hash pattern to know uh, whether or not my environment has been compromised, whether or not this um, hash or bad hash uh, is inside my network. And how do I do that? More importantly, in real time, and then take 
really fast remediation, or more importantly, even better, know that I am not uh, impacted or in effect at all. So, so here's a good example. We've got these file indicators. They're indicators of compromise um, piece. And we're really trying to understand um, whether or not uh, these indicators are somewhere in my environment. And if you're like most folks, and I'm sure each of you are, um, you have an extremely large enterprise and network, and there's even inside a single instance of an operating system, a lot of places to check. So we want to provide you the ability to actually look at those very fast, very efficient, and concise, and know immediately whether or not um, you have an issue, or back to our um, enterprise um, cyber threat gap model, uh, whether you need to take action or not, because uh, we want to save you that time. So we want to look at this from a real use case standpoint. So we've got really, really uh, cool capability in that we have three use cases. And the use cases go like this. First one, advanced malware identification. How do I know whether I've got advanced threats uh, on my high-risk as assets inside of my environment? Um, and then more importantly, how do I leverage third-party vendors who give me threat intelligence feeds uh, using their sandbox technology. So I'll walk through a quick walkthrough of how that integration works really quick. Second one uh, is around monitoring uh, for peer communication and sourced IOCs. So there are a number of places out there that provide interfaces um, through Sticks and Taxi, um, which is part of the Cybox uh, effort. And if you're familiar with Sticks and Taxi, it is a an industry standard around passing uh, threat information and being able to securely uh, promote um, information around IOCs uh, in a way uh, peers can share without having to have a, a authenticated other threat source. We've got a solution for that. It's very cool. I want to introduce that to you. Um, and then the third piece is how do I integrate a commercial threat intelligence source? Um, as I mentioned before, like a Cisco or a Palo Alto or um, a Checkpoint uh, infrastructure to be able to go utilize um, my current uh, Tripwire investment to be able to go look and see, do I have IOC issues inside of my environment? So let's walk through these. It's time. So let's talk about the first case. I want to be able to monitor and I want to be able to integrate a commercial threat intelligence service uh, with Tripwire Enterprise to know if something is, is untoward happening in my network. So the way that works is like this. I've got my threat intelligence provider, and I pass my, my indicator of compromise through a, a hash profile. New profiles have come out, and Tripwire Enterprise is there. I've already used directly out of the box um, trip our enterprise to go out and do a hash check on my binary files of interest. So I've already have a hash database of all of my, all of my uh, critical files in place. So I immediately look to see if, if that new indicator is present in my entire environment for every system that, that trip our enterprise actually monitors. More importantly, as new hash or new indicators come through, I now have the ability to start monitoring for indicators across all new changes that happen inside of that environment. And if a threat is detected, I can actually immediately drive an automated workflow with an alert to go back up into the sandboxes of partners like iSight or like CrowdStrike and be able to detonate uh, to see if um, a potential threat or even something that's totally unknown is actually malware or a uh, advanced persistent threat capability. Um, and feed that back through this loop again so that I have fast, continuous indicators of what's taking place in vir environment around binary change. Really cool new capability, excellent integration, provides a uh, deep indicator um, technology and identifies new information to you uh, in terms of what's happening. So 
Um, that's around commercial threat intelligence service piece. I want to talk about really the next uh, component, which is really how do you leverage um, kind of peer and community source pieces. As I mentioned before, we now have a, with our latest release, uh, an enterprise um, taxi service piece. We have an API that allows you to feed in through either a Sticks or taxi um, feed service uh, into Tripwire Enterprise. More importantly, we also have the ability that you can provide that same level of intelligence um, directly through a local file source that you've authenticated, whether that's a flat file or a CSV-based uh, interface. And we can do that directly into Tripwire Enterprise. And it works like this. Indicator can go in through the taxi service or through uh, the file service uh, interface into Tripwire Enterprise. Again, we've already pre-hashed um, our files inside of what's in place, and we can immediately uh, check inside of our database to see if that particular indicator is found anywhere inside of our monitored network. And more importantly, if it's not, then every new change that comes through each new time can be um, checked against that uh, hash set to know that it is um, coming into my environment and it's a brand new indicator of change, at which point we can either generate a report or take an immediate action to identify and drive a workflow uh, to either block and remediate and remove that piece of code um, or flag and alert uh, on an as-needed basis. Again, uh, on your um, standpoint, it's really about saving you time, about using capability, and you can push that up to other partners like uh, Solstra um, who can provide additional telemetry and information about what that um, bad particular uh, IOC is, uh, means uh, to you in terms of what's happening. Again, really cool, capable pieces. Gives you another avenue to leverage uh, threat intelligence information. So let's talk about our third uh, and final uh, choice in terms of what we're looking at, and that's really around advanced malware um, detection and capability. Again, this one starts a little bit different. Um, this is this is Tripwire Enterprise really finding a new binary, and it may have found it in a place that it may not know. Um, and it's really about the ability to query on an as-needed basis to know whether or not um, what I have is good or bad, uh, and then being able to take um, appropriate and concise action uh, to prevent. Uh, a gap from happening in the future. So this is, I found a new binary. Tripwire Enterprise then sends that hash uh, of that up to my threat analytics provider, and it determines either it is a threat, it isn't a threat, or it doesn't know. In the case that it's a threat, a lot of interesting things can happen. If it isn't a threat, no harm, no foul, immediately passes that information back um, to Tripwire Enterprise, but in this one, let's take the, the interesting case where something bad has happened. I now know that I have a, an advanced threat, and it's new. Um, it, I may have integrated with the previous use cases, um, but I now have something new that's taking place, and I need to be able to take action with it. So I can now take a workflow, and I want to say I want to remove that hash or that file from what's there, or I want to do additional checks. I want to run an alert. I want to run a report. I want to give you... Um, additional information. This can be done literally in minutes uh, worth of time. But more importantly, I can take additional actions in terms of how this works. And that is, if I'm working with an advanced um, threat detection capability that has perhaps uh, firewall or IPS uh, capability, um, I can now, in addition to alerting Tripwire Enterprise on the systems that's monitored, I can actually update my prevention rules um, on my network to actually detect for those things so that in-flight traffic can do real-time blocking of command and control, look for new exfiltration elements, even look for other polymorphic elements that may be add-ons to the profile of that particular uh, piece of infection. So that you've blocked not just what you're monitoring with, with Tripwire Enterprise, but also in-flight transactions that are happening across your network. 
And we've got this integration across a number of vendors uh, in our Technology Alliance uh, partnership, um, and we have functional running uh, customer implementations uh, currently on Palo Alto, Threat Cloud from Cisco, um, Checkpoint, as well as LastLine. So a host of next-gen uh, capability uh, in terms of what we've got and, and what we're providing. So incredibly um, useful, timely information in terms of being able to really harness threat intelligence information in a way um, that you can utilize uh, with your existing implementation of Tripper Enterprise. So let's talk really kind of what that means um, in terms of, of, of being able to do the search and de destroy uh, for bad hashes. Well, it really means a couple of things. One is we now have the ability to look at and find advanced malware. And we're doing that by direct, um, quick integration with malware services, uh, whether those malware services are peer level and community uh, sourced uh, versions of, of indicators of compromise or commercial uh, versions, we're able to actually allow you to have that understanding of what's happening um, on your, your high risk assets that you currently have under monitoring. More importantly, we give you the ability to move not just from what's happening now, but you can take additional protective stances. You can, you can put in that remediation and close um, the prevention gap um, by allowing uh, a connection and an integration such that your, your IDS system, your, your, um, your IPS system is able to actually update its rules so that the firewall can now shut down and check for specific signatures that are coming across it in flight. So it's not just um, Tripwire that's providing that capability, but we now add value uh, to additional um, pieces inside of your environment by giving them more information. And then in the last piece is we can actually um, uh, have remediation steps that actually remove uh, those malware signatures and that malware component piece um, from your environment as it's detected. So you give you the ability to take not just uh, intelligence or not just indicators, but we can actually provide that level of threat protection. Um, and that comes from uh, the ability to, to remove as well as the ability to integrate um, with other uh, parties through our um, Tripwire um, Technology Alliance partnerships uh, with other, pro other providers. So, um, kind of in conclusion, uh, one, I want to thank you uh, for the time that you've spent with me. We've really kind of looked at two separate uh, interesting pieces. I called them hide and seek, and then the other one was seek and destroy. The first solution was around our, um, our tripwire, um, our tripwire uh, asset discovery appliance, or our ability to look and see what you may not know about inside your environment to really fulfill the SANS two, uh, first two capabilities around um, knowing what hardware is on your system and then knowing what software is there and whether it was authorized or unauthorized. So those things that are coming onto your environment that you may not have uh, knowledge about, you can now protect uh, in addition or know that you need to protect them, or more importantly, if it is um, a, a rogue device, you know that you need to protect against it. Uh, that was the first solution, the, the asset discovery appliance. The second one that we just mentioned is how do I take uh, the, the threat intelligence vendors that are out there, either from public pieces, from commercial portions, or from other uh, sources, and integrate those so that I have a greater, deeper, secure uh, infrastructure by using the Tripwire Enterprise implementation that I currently have. And that is um, our threat intelligence solution set. We went through three cases. One was looking at monitoring for commercial threat intelligence. The second one was a peer or community sourced indicator of compromise solution. And the third was advanced malware portions. And we have solutions for each of those three. Um, and they can be integrated with other solution providers as well.
So I want to say thank you. Um, this is Bryce Schroeder. Thank you for joining us for Tripwire Threat Intelligence University. Hope you'll stay with us for the next segment, and I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.